Jen Gru's stream of the Murders at Karlov Manor standard format. Uh, the set came out a couple of days ago, but I've been busy and haven't had an opportunity to play or brew more, more than just like one and a half decks, um, which we'll get back to. But I haven't looked much at the set because I was having such a great time brewing in the last standard format right up until the end um, that we're just going to crack packs and look at cards and see if we get some excitement from existing brews or excitement for some new brews. Let's get into it. Starting with this golden pack, because we bought 10, we get a golden pack. We'll do this one at a time. Why not? We got a War Leader's Call. This is from the new set, uh, an enchantment. I've seen this already. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, War Leader's Call deals one damage to each opponent. Definitely some fun stuff to do with that. Uh, I think there's probably a lot already being done, but I'm going to take note of it. for some exploration. Then we also uh, we get another card from the new set in Forensic Gadgeteer, which is a two, three, four, two, and a blue, three total mana cost for a Vidalcan Artificer Detective. Whenever you cast an instant, I'm sorry, whenever you cast an artifact spell, investigate. Activated abilities of artifacts you control cost one less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one mana. Okay, I love this. Uh, Artifacts are some of my favorite things in Magic. <clears throat> uh, I love the existing Tezzeret ability that reduces the abilities of artifacts. Um, so anything that benefits from artifacts entering the battlefield would benefit from Forensic Gadgeteer. And I, and I think we've got one. I can't remember if it's cast or enters the battlefield, but there's definitely some ETB artifact uh, cards in Standard. And this is a fine rate uh, at three for a two, three um, and reducing the co cost of artifacts. We can definitely make some use out of. So I'm going to take note of forensic agiteer too. All right. <clears throat> so we've got a mythic here. Tristani three whispers also from the new set. We've got a legendary dryad for a three. Tristani Three Whispers is a 4-4 four, four, with three activated abilities. Hmm. Man, I hate to take note of all these things right away, but uh, I get I get some hype from Tristani. And I'll tell you why. Um, I think there's probably a green-white deck that makes use of Agatha... I'm going to forget the name of the cards because I always do. But it's a two-man artifact that exiles stuff in the graveyard, get put, puts plus one, plus one counters on creatures, and then gives creatures you control the activated abilities of the cards that have been uh, exiled with Agatha's, whatever the heck it's called. So, and this gives us three activated abilities. Target creature gains death touch until the end of turn for two. Target creature gains vigilance until the end of turn for one. Target creature gains double strike until the end of turn for three. Yeah, that's just, there's just some sauce there. I mean, like a four mana, I'm sorry, a three mana, four, four, um, with flexibility on the mana for, you know, the deck that's playing two colors. Pretty good, anyway. <clears throat> We've got a Conduit of Worlds. I think I have copies of this, but I, I don't see it too often. You may play lands from your graveyard. Choose target non-land permanent card in your graveyard. If you haven't cast a spell this turn, you may cast that card. If you do, can't cast additional spells this turn. This is an interesting magic card, but I haven't felt compelled to brew around it. Probably because we don't have a lot of landfall in standard right now, if any. Uh, la before last rotation, I was trying to do some fun stuff with land triggers, but since it's been gone, um, not as interested. We've got Rata Drabek of Urborg. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. I've seen, uh, I've seen this. I've not brewed around it. <clears throat> A four mana three three legendary zombie wizard with vigilance and ward two. Other zombies we control have vigilance. Whenever a legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's non-legendary, and it's a 2-2 two -two black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Um, I've seen this in versions of Rafine, and I've seen it in other variations of legendary decks. Uh, but I don't love it. It doesn't scream to me we need to do something with this. So we're not going to take note of it for now, even though we've already had it for a while. Case of the Uneaten Feast is one of the few cards I've already opened from this set, just from like random packs that I got from playing yesterday morning. Um, 
Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. To solve this, you've gained five or more life this turn. So if at the end of a turn, when Case of the Uneaten Feast has been in play, uh, on, on, let's see, your end step. Yeah, so if you've gained more than five, uh, five or more life on your turn, uh, the case is solved. And in that case, uh, <laughs> sacrifice this case, creature cards in your graveyard. Again, you may cast this card from your graveyard until end of turn. Um, this is kind of cool. I, I can see this may having uh, some legs in the you know mono white life gain decks or even like black white life gain decks. Uh, not something I'm particularly excited about. I feel like other people will do that for us. So let's get into murders at Karlov Manor. Pack number 10. We're going to grab these one at a time and try to blast through them. <clears throat> All right, start with Culvert Ambusher, a 4-5 Worm Horror for 5, 3 colorless and 2 green. When Culvert Ambusher enters the battlefield or is turn face up, target creature blocks this turn if able. Uh, this seems like a fine limited card, but we will never play it in standard. Uh, Bubble Smuggler as an Octopus Fish. Uh, I like Octopus because there are some weird cards that interact with this creature type, and most Octopi and like Serpents and stuff like that, uh, Leviathans are all like, they're all high mana costs uh creatures so maybe there's some play for this if there's an octopus interaction somewhere uh otherwise uh yeah probably just too expensive to do anything in standard a 2-1 rate is not great even for blue there's other better things out there we've got airtight alibi an enchantment aura okay so we can tutor this with kellen the only deck that we're, we've brewed so far uh, for this format that we started last format is a Kellen deck. So I'm always out on the out lookout for uh, en enchantment auras that Kellen or equipment that Kellen can tutor up uh, with his adventure ability. So we've got a flash enchant creature for three that's green and two colorless. When airtight alibi enters the battlefield, untap enchanted creature. It gains hexproof until the end of turn. If it's suspected, it's no longer suspected. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and can't become suspected. Uh, yeah, this is fine, but we're... Probably never going to use it. <laughs> uh, Museum Night Watch is a 3-2 Centaur Soldier for 3 and 1 white. 4 total mana cost. Not the greatest rate. Uh, it has Disguise 2, the reasonable Disguise rate. <clears throat> when Museum Night Watch dies, create a 2-2 white and blue Detective Creature Token. I can't see us playing this in standard. It's a soldier anyway, but um, probably a great, uh, great card for... Limited, but not here. I love Goblin, Goblin Mask Maker's art. And I like that it uh, has an effect on your, your face down, your disguise uh, creatures. But I just feel like you're not going to be able to use this very often. So it's a 1 red or a 1 2 Goblin Citizen. When it attacks, face down spells you cast this turn cost 1 less to cast. Uh, so it would potentially allow you to play a face down uh, card on turn 2. But I can just see this this card doing absolutely nothing later in the game, so it's probably a bit of a trap unless there's really a way to uh, make a great deck with with disguise spells, and I'm not sure. They went this way. It's a green sorcery, two plus one green. Search your library, basic land card, put it on battlefield tap, then shuffle, investigate. We've seen a lot of cards like this. There may be some re reason to play it in standard, but um, I can't immediately think of it. Vicious interrogation is our rare. <clears throat> Instant, one blue, one white. This spell costs one blue, one white more to cast for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target players. Investigate X times where X is the total number of creatures those players control. Hmm. This is pretty interesting. Because you can target yourself. I think, right? Yeah. Because you can target yourself... You can, if you're playing the right style of deck, ensure that there are lots of creatures. This is, I'm, I'm thinking this would most most likely be in a deck where you're playing lots of tokens and or there's some benefit for ETB. Uh, we're just getting to a certain uh, density of tokens, permanents. Uh, there's, there's a card that lets you win the game if you have exactly 13 permanents or, or maybe you can sacrifice. I think it's Stentia's Uprising. Well, it's red, but uh, you can... You have exactly thirteen permanents or something like that. You can sack it and deal seven to somebody. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that we're getting pretty janky. Um, but being able to investigate X times, if you can get some ETB trigger off of artifacts entering the battlefield, uh, this could be interesting. TBD. On to pack nine. 
We've got sample collector. When sample collector attacks, you may collect evidence three. When you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. It's a troll detective, a two, three for three. Artwork is cool. Uh, but unless detective is a relevant creature type, we're not getting anything out of troll. And a two, three for three is just fine. Um, yeah, unless, unless we, yeah, probably not seeing any action. Sorry. We got an enchantment, makeshift binding, uh, two colorless and a white. When makeshift binding enters the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until makeshift binding leaves the battlefield. You gain two life. So this is kind of like an O-ring, but it only hits creatures and it doesn't have flash. I don't love it. Cold case cracker, spirit detective, three, I'm sorry. Yeah, three, three flyer for four mana. When it dies, you investigate. This is probably a great limited card. I don't see it seeing play in standard, but probably a great limited card. Public thoroughfare enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it. Unless you tap an untapped artifact or land you control, we can add one mana of any color. Uh, probably not seeing standard play. Too many cool lands. Track the confession as an additional cost to cast the spell. You may collect evidence six. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Evidence was collected and said each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures they control. Um... I don't think this is going to see a lot of play either. Just too many good removal spells already in standard. Um, <laughs> Defenestrated Phantom. Oh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, wow. Cost 6 is a 4-3 flyer with Disguise 5. Uh, I don't like it. I don't even know if I like it for limited, but I'm not a limited expert, so don't ask me. Case of the Pilfered Proof. I like the name of this card. Whenever a detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever a detective you control is turned face up, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. That's not bad. I've seen a lot of detectives so far. Only going to come from this set, so there might be some limitation there. But uh, to solve this, you control three or more detectives. <clears throat> um, okay. Once it's solved, if one or more tokens would be created under your control, those tokens plus a clue token are created instead. Ah. Uh... And I want to like this card, but I think it requires too much setups, unless there's some really great detectives to play with this, like maybe the Thraben Inspector type dude or something. Um, I don't see it getting any getting action. Uh, Shadowy Backstreets. This is one of the Surveil Lands. Uh, jury's still out for me on Surveil Lands. I like Surveilling. I like Dual Lands. But the fact that they always enter the battlefield tapped um, is something I don't love. And it's, they're not likely to see any play in aggressive decks. So we'll see. Black-white is a place where it might be useful. Murders at Karlov Manor, pack 8. Alright, we've got Hedge Whisperer. Choose not to untap Hedge Whisperer during your untap step. This is an 3 for 1 green. Elf Druid Detective. So all potentially relevant uh, creature types here. Elf Druid and Detective may have some love. Uh, you can tap 4... Three and a green, plus Hedge Whisper to collect and collect evidence for. Target land you control becomes a 5-5 five, five green plant boar creature with haste for as long as Hedge Whisper remains tapped. Still in land. Bait only as a sorcery. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I guess it, it, I know, for as long as it remains tapped, so it can... You can have this land become a 5-5 a five, five plant boar for a while, but I think it's this is probably more, more of a good limited card and not a standard card. So you got Crowl Whip Cracker, 3-2 uh, with Reach, Insect Assassin for 1 black, 1 green, decent rate. When Whip Cracker enters Valve, you destroy target, token, and opponent controls. Yeah, I don't hate this. This is probably more of a sideboard card than... Uh, because there's just so many great, like, two drops that are already three twos in these colors. But having reach isn't the worst thing in the world. Uh, and there are plenty of tokens to destroy in this format. So, I don't know. Maybe maybe Crowl, Crowl Whipcracker will see some play. I already talked about this card. It's terrible. We got a Rackish Scoundrel, Death Touch, Elf Rogue, 3-3 three, three for 4. Yep. Despite being an elf and a rogue, no one's ever going to play this. <clears throat> dog walker. This dog, the token dog, way cuter than the dogs in the actual artwork. So we've got a 3-1 with Vigilance. 
in Boros colors, human citizen, with disguise two, when it's turned face up, create two tapped one one white dog tokens. Hmm. Now, this probably plays really well with the first card we wrote down today, like a War Leader's Call. I think it's in the same colors. Um, so I, I, I've not evaluated that enough to know if it's any good, but but Dog Walker might, might have some legs. <laughs> Another pun intended. At least worth considering. Not sure how much I love the disguise thing. You've got to pay three mana to put it down as a 2-2. Two -two. Then you pay two more mana to turn it face up, and you get, you know, a couple dog tokens in addition to a 3-1. So, on to the rare. Yeah, got Wojek Investigator. A 2-4 with Flying and Vigilant for three. That's a good rate. A uh, really good rate, actually. Um, Angel Detective. At the beginning of your upkeep, investigate one for each opponent who has more cards in hand than you. Um, yeah, this is a good magic card. It doesn't excite me. There's nothing that, that that comes to mind that's like, man, this would be fun to brew around. But if you're trying to brew something else and you just like, you know, want to stay alive uh, against aggressive decks, a flying vigilant angel is absolutely fine. So, on to pack seven, murders at Karlov Manor. That long goodbye can't be countered. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana value three or less. Uh, this is a fine removal spell. I don't see it get, getting a lot of action in standard unless as a sideboard card uh, because there's just too many other good, uh, less conditional removal spells. Like, it doesn't pass the Shieldred test. Like, I can't kill Shieldred with this thing. If I can't kill Shieldred, Shieldred uh, I probably don't want it. But it's probably a great sideboard card as an alternative to some of the others, although I would argue that for... Two mana against more aggressive decks that are playing a lot of creatures and planeswalkers of mana value three or less, unless those are planeswalkers particularly. Uh, you're probably better off with, um, you know, the, the the one that hits humans for two, uh, for three, and you gain some life, or or the uh, virtue, the black virtue. Um, so fine magic card, but nothing we're gonna get lose sleep thinking about. <clears throat> um, extract a confession, you may collect evidence six. Yeah, we already talked about this card. Again, fine, but probably not seeing play just because there's too many other good solutions for that problem. Demand answers. Additional costs to cast the spell, sacrifice an artifact, or discard a card. So it's kind of like some of these similar spells we've seen probably are, are already have access to in standard, but it gives us the opportunity to, to sacrifice an artifact. Um, there are some cool uses for that. Uh, in fact, if you follow any of my videos, there's like an Urbrask's Forge deck where sometimes we want to specifically be sacrificing artifacts. Um, so I'm, I'm going to take note of this just to see if there's... something worth considering there. <clears throat> we got Case of the Gateway... Get, gateway? Getaway? I thought I was going to say Getaway Express, but it's Gateway Express. Uh, when this case enters the battlefield, choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals one damage to that creature. That's fine. Especially if you're on the, you know, go wide plan. To solve three or more creatures attacked this turn. Uh, I like that the, the fact that the original case ability helps uh, allow you the solution. You've got three creatures in play, but they're one ones and they're being, you know, held up by a 3-3 three -three or something. Uh, when the case enters the battlefield, maybe you kill that 3-3 with your 3-1-1s, and then you're able to attack with them uh, and solve the case. And once you've solved it, creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. I think this is great for a token strategy. I don't know if you'd want a bunch of them, but um, maybe a copy or two. I think I th think this will probably at some point see standard play. I'm not going to brew around it because I'm not hyped about tokens right now, but maybe that'll change. So we've got Undercover, undercover Crocodelf. <laughs> An elf crocodile detective uh, in Simic colors. You got to pay six for a 5-5. Five, five. When it deals combat damage to a player, investigate. Uh, you can flip it up from its disguise for five. Um, this this might be good in limited. I, I wish it was good in standard, but we're, we're pretty far away. Uh, Fairy Snoop. We got three mana, one co colorless, blue and black. Or a fairy detective. Flying one four with disguise three. When it's turned face up, look at the top two cards of your library, put one in hand and the other in the graveyard. 
I, I like this card. I think this is a flavorful magic card. Um, works really well with fairies and detective. I don't think it's good enough, uh, but I would almost assuredly want this in blue black for uh, limited. Maybe, maybe there will be a fairy snoop in standard, but I wouldn't bet on it. A rare is World Souls Rage. Got X plus green plus red. For a sorcery, World Souls Rage deals X damage to any target. Put up to X land cards from your hand and or graveyard onto the battlefield tapped. <sighs> I, I can't not take interest in this. <sighs> yeah. We need to have lands in our graveyard, most likely. We've got the life gainy fetch lands. Um, we've got plenty of ways to uh, mill ourselves or to surveil in standard. We've, we've now got surveil lands that can help us put some uh, lands in the graveyard. But I like the ability to, I mean, just potentially, even, even for four mana, like bolt something and ramp two lands. Um, this could definitely be a trap and like sit in your hand for a while, but you know, if, if you can manage to put a bunch of lands in your graveyard and by like turn three or turn four, um, or really like later in that, you do a little ramping uh, up without World Souls Rage. I don't know that I play a lot of these, but maybe a couple copies and something that's trying to do some saucy shiz, which is really what we're here for. Uh, and Jank Bruce. I can see this being a lot of fun. So it might, it might actually be the card I'm most interested in, in messing with so far. Murza, Mur Karlov Manor, Paxix. Branch of Itugazi, uh, disguise for three. I like the land can be a creature, so it's not the worst top deck later in the game, but turn face up, two mana of any one color until the end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Um, yeah, I don't know. Jury's out on this. Interesting, but I can't think of anything I really want to do with it. Felonious Rage, instant. Target creature you control gets two, zero, Gains haste until the end of turn. When that creature dies this turn, create a white and blue detective creature token. Mm. Uh -uh. Cool little combat trick, I guess. If you're trying to get detectives into play. I don't, I don't think anyone is playing that, probably, but you never know. <clears throat> Due diligence. This is an aura, so we can tutor it with Kellen. Uh, enchant creature, when due diligence enters the battlefield, target creature you're, you control other than enchanter creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains vigilance until the end of turn. Any creature gets plus two, plus two, and has vigilance. Um, this is fine. I don't think we're going to be tutoring it up with Kellen, unfortunately, but we can if we want to. Toxin analysis. This is cool, cool uh, art here. Target creature gains death touch and lifelink until the end of turn. Hold on. Toxic creature gains death touch and lifelink until the end of turn. Investigate. Cool match card. Um, not immediately leaping to brew around it, that's for sure, but it's cool. Locks it on. I can see this maybe being a sideboard card in a handful of decks. Locks it on, eavesdropper. We've got a 3-3 three, three for 4, 3 and a green for an elephant detective. It's a detective, it's an elephant, gotta love elephants. When locks it on, eavesdropper enters the battlefield, investigate. When you draw your second card each turn, locks it on eavesdropper, gets plus one, plus one, gains vigilance until the end of turn. So if you watch uh, the Zimone and Dina deck from last format, Jank Brews, you'll know that we're interested in whenever you draw your second card each turn effects, because both Dina and, oh man, I can't remember the name of the four, three for four, that's black, that does the same thing. Unfortunately, this effect is not good enough for us to care about in that deck. Uh, it's not going to make that deck any better, so unfortunately, it's not going to see play. We've got another prophecy, eidetic memory. We've already talked about that. Still interested in this. Already took note of it, though. On to pack five. We've got a rune brand juggler. It's a human shaman, a 2 2 for one black, one red. When rune brand juggler enters the battlefield, suspect up to one target creature you control. So we can give a creature menace and the inability to block. We can also pay five, sacrifice a suspected creature, target creature gets minus five, minus five until the end of turn. I think this is probably an awesome limited card. 
I don't think anyone's going to play it in standard. Agency corner. Interesting guard is a 3-6 for 5. Ogre cleric. You can pay 2 and a black to sacrifice another creature, draw a card. If sacrifice creature was suspected, draw 2 cards instead. Uh, again, maybe a fine limited card. I don't know, but we're not playing in standard. Man answers as an additional cost to cast a spell. Sacrifice an artifact to discard a card. We already talked about this. I love it. Uh, can't wait to do some brewing. We already talked about Goblin Mask Maker. Yeah, interesting, but probably a trap. Um, we've got Benthic Criminologists, Merfolk Wizard. Those are relevant creature types. Four, five for five. When Benthic Criminologist enters the battlefield or attacks, you may sacrifice an artifact. If you do, draw a card. Yeah, uh, probably not good enough. <laughs> uh, definitely an interesting limited card if you're in some artifact action. A uh, target creature gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until the end of turn. Fanatical Strength. This is just a giant growth with one extra cost, uh, one, one extra mana cost, and the trample ability. Fine, but probably not playing it. Pompous Gadabout is a 4 2 for three. Human Citizen. Relevant creature types. As hexproof as long as it's your turn. Can't be blocked by creatures that don't have a name. <laughs> that don't have a name. I might need some help with rules text here, but... I wonder if tokens don't have a name. And I wonder, I wonder what else might not have a name. I imagine some tokens don't have a name, that of course tokens that are copies of a thing would have a name. But... If you know the answer, feel free to put it in the comments if you're watching this on such a such an environment where you can comment. And we got a Mythic Wildcard. I'll take it. Always happy to brew around Mythic Wildcards. Pack four, Murders at Karlov Manor. All right, we got we got another Pompous God about. Uh, we got Benthic Criminologist. We got that in our last pack too. Fanatical Strength also had that in our last pack. Shock, here's a new one. Shocking. Um, two damage to any target. Fine magic card, but uh, we've got better ones in standard right now. Suspicious Detonation. This spell costs three less to cast if you've sacrificed an artifact this turn. This spell can't be countered. Deals four damage to target creature. Uh, I think that card's kind of bad. Maybe maybe for limited. Even then, it still seems kind of bad. Um, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Pick your poison. I like, I like choices. Pick your poison. A sorcery, one green. Each opponent sacrifices an artifact. Each opponent sacrifices an enchantment. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. Definitely sideboard themed card, uh, but not the worst. I can potentially see places for this in standard, depending on where the formats go. We've got Flotsam and Jetsam. I haven't seen this yet. Uh, Flotsam, one and either green or blue, instant, mill three cards, investigate. I can see that being useful, depending on what we're trying to do. Jetsam uh, costs six, four plus either blue or blacks. Uh, each opponent mills three cards, then you may cast a spell from each opponent's graveyard without paying its mana cost. A spell cast this way would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. Uh, very situational. I mean, it could be powerful, but you gotta pay six for this. Um, so I, I would imagine this needs to hang out in a sideboard if you wanted to use Jetsam, because th th this could just like, okay, I've died to red because I have this card. <laughs> Doppelgang. Okay, I already love it. I've never seen this card, but we got XXX Green Blue. For each of X target permanents, create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. So if X is one, we've got to pay five. We would create one token that's a copy of a permanent. is two we're gonna to have to pay eight that would give us two permanents that we could create two copies of that could get absurd <clears throat> and it doesn't matter who owns those per permanents uh yeah like I, I just i have to take interest in this uh I, I think blue green is among my my uh favorite color combinations there's there's been nothing good in simic aside from i think uh, like ash lizzle's like food token deck which is cool but but it's not something that i am interested in playing uh something like doppelgang i'm definitely interested in playing so yeah we'll be brewing around that almost assuredly murders at karloff manor pack three we've got case of the gateway express we've already talked about this 
interesting magic card. May see some play. Public thoroughfare, we've already talked about two. Uh, Jaded Analyst, we have not talked about. It's a human detective. It's a 3 2 for two in blue, which is pro. Of course, it has Defender. <laughs> Whenever you draw your second card each turn, Jaded Analyst loses Defender and gains Vigilance until the end of turn. Um, I don't know. Human Detective is relevant creature types. A 3 2 for two is fine. Uh, drawing your second card each turn. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm not excited about this card, but it's not the worst magic card. Uh, Fanatical Strength, there's our Giant Crow 3 print with some Trample. Airtight Alibi, uh, we've already looked at this. We, we talked about tutoring it up with Kellen and then decided, of course, we wouldn't because it's not very good. We've got Cornered Crook, uh, which is a 5-mana five 5-4 five, Vaishino Warrior. When Cornered Crook enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice an artifact. When you do, Cornered Crook deals 3 damage to any target. I don't hate this. Uh, I don't think it's going to see standard play. Maybe if you gain Drained off sacrificing the artifact, or you really want to be sacrificing artifacts, but probably just not good enough. Uh, we've got our first rare case, Case of the Stashed Skeleton. This is a case that costs one black and one colorless. When this case enters the battlefield, create a 2-1 black skeleton creature token and suspect it. That's not the worst thing. Uh, you get a 2-1 that's got Menace and can't block. Uh, to solve, you control no suspected skeletons. So all that has to happen is that skeleton and any other suspected skeletons that you might happen to have hanging about your battlefield are dead, uh, which would be pretty easy to accommodate. I mean, it, you just bash them into things. If it doesn't die, you sack it to something. Yeah, uh, it's just something easy to solve. Case that, that looks easy to solve. Um, once it's solved, you can pay one and a black. Sacrifice this case. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand. Then shuffle. Activate only as a sorcery. Um, I don't know. I'm sure there's places for this. I probably. I mean, I don't think it's as good of a tutor as as the bargain tutor. Um, but. In a deck where you're trying to assemble a combo, I can see this being desirable. Uh, especially if you're if you're creating tokens, sacking those tokens um, to draw cards, which is definitely a thing Black does, and there's plenty of cards in Standard that can help you do that. Uh, it would be great if that skeleton wasn't suspected in the first place, so it could like help keep you alive while you're searching for the uh, combination. But I can see Case of the Stash Skeleton finding its way into some janky standard decks. I'm not going to take note of it because i got plenty of others, but it's it's interesting. Car Murders of Karlov Manor Pack 2. We've got Torch the Witness. X plus red. Sorcery deals twice X damage to target creature. If excess damage was dealt to the that creature this way, investigate. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I like this card. I don't, I don't know if and how I'm going to play it, but I like it. <clears throat> Tunnel Tipster, love the art. Mole Scout, one green, one colors for a 1-1. One, one. Man of Dork. Uh, beginning of your end step, if a face-down creature in a battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on Tunnel Tipster. Uh, I mean, it, it, I guess if, if Disguise becomes a thing, Tunnel Tipster might have a home, but there are otherwise much better uh, Man of Dorks. Gravestone Strider... A two mana one three artifact creature golem. You can pay one to add one mana of any color. Activate only once per turn. Or you can pay two and exile this dude from the graveyard. Exile target card from a graveyard. Um, this is fine, and it ha might have uh, some fun interaction with Tezzeret, which I still am desperately try trying to make, make a Tezzeret deck that isn't terrible. Um, but still, probably not good enough. I mean, I think Tezzeret would make the uh, add one mana of any color ability uh, free. So. With Tezzeret, it's it's a ramp. Um, you know, potentially exiling a card from a graveyard has utility for sure. But I don't know. Probably not good enough. <laughs> Asda Vigilante, a giant soldier, 4-4 four, four for 5. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on. 2 on target creature you control with power 2 or less. Um, yeah, never going to see play in standard. We've already talked about the Crocodelf. Crocodelf. We've got Fuss and Bother. I like the artwork on this. Uh, Fuss is a three-mana instant. Two plus either red or white. 
Put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature you control. Let's see that maybe being a thing. Uh, if you're going going wide, maybe especially in the War Leaders Call uh, Dog Walker strategy we were talking about earlier. Or uh, we got Bother. Uh, create three colorless Thopter artifact tokens with flying and surveil two. Three Thopters for six mana. Not the greatest, even with the surveil. So you'd really have to have uh, a deck that benefits from artifact ETBs to get too excited about this. But that might exist. I'm not looking for it, but it might exist. We've got Kylox Visionary Inventor. What a weird looking card. Five, six, seven mana. So five plus blue plus red for a legendary Vaishino Artificer with Menace, Ward 2, and Haste. It's a 4-4. Four, four. 7. Kylox Visionary Inventor Attack. Sacrifice any number of other creatures, then exile the top X cards of your library, where X is their total power. You may cast any number of instant or sorcery spells from among the exiled cards without paying their mana costs. Man, I want to like this because this channel is called Jank Brews, and I've done some jank brewing in my time. Uh, but honestly, this sounds bad. It's really expensive... Um, if you've got a bunch of creatures in play, they they have to be generated from instants and sorceries, creating tokens for this to be even remotely interesting. And then, what are you going to hit off the top X cards of your library? Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's something here, but I don't see it. I, I'd be very excited if someone made an awesome Kylox Visionary Inventor deck, because I love the card. I, I just don't see how we're going we're gonna to do... We're going to win it all with, with that card. Last pack, Murders at Karlov Manor. We've got Slimy Dual Leech. <laughs> That's pretty cool looking. It is a leech. 2-4-4-4. Four, four, four. Beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control with power 2 or less gets plus 1, plus 0, and gains death touch until the end of turn. People will play this in limited. No one will play it in standard. we got another Dog Walker. We won't talk about that again. Innocent bystander. <laughs> Goblin citizen, uh, a 2 1 for 2 in red. Whenever innocent bystander is dealt 3 or more damage, investigate. Eh, yeah, no one's going to play that, I don't think. Thinking cap is an equipment, so we can tutor it up with Kellen, but we're not going to because it's not good. Equip creature gets plus 1 plus 2. We can equip a detective for 1 or anything else for 3. Due diligence, we've seen before. We can again tutor it up with Kellen, but we're not going to because it's not good. Uh, escape Tunnel is the land. I haven't seen this. Sacrifice Escape Tunnel. Search your library for basic land. Put it in the battlefield tap, then shuffle. Uh, so it's an Evolving Wilds with, also, Sacrifice Escape Tunnel. Target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. Uh, the only reason I can think of someone playing this is if we're, we're on that uh, you know, Slow Gurk. Maybe would have some utility for Escape Tunnel. Um, maybe, what, what's the card we were like? World, World Souls Rage. Maybe there's a place for this. I don't know. Uh, but probably, probably not. Polygraph Orb is an uncommon artifact. Costs four colorless and a black. When a Polygraph Orb enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of the library. Put two of them in your hand. Rest into your graveyard. You lose two life. Once it's in play, we can pay two and sacrifice it, um, tap it, I'm sorry, collect evidence three. Each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card or sacrifice a creature. I want to like this card. Uh, it's interesting, but I don't see it making its way into standard. I don't I don't see it making, so like it would go great with Tezzeret, right? Um, Tezzeret puts cards into your graveyard with its plus. Its, its static ability would allow you to use the, you know, not have to pay the, the two, uh, uh, alongside tapping polygraph orb um but it's just too easy for your opponent to pay the three life or discard a card or sacrifice a creature so no one's gonna play that our last rare today is aurelia the law above hmm. so aurelia is not above the law aurelia is the law above so she is a Five mana, four, four. We got three, a red, and a white. With flying, vigilance, and haste. Uh, that's good. 
Whenever a player attacks with three or more creatures, you draw a card. That's cool. It could be them or it could be you. Whenever a player attacks with five or more creatures, Aurelia, the law above, deals three damage to each of your opponents and you gain three life. I can see this being a nice top end for um, the War Leaders Call Dog Walker style deck we were talking about earlier. I'll add, I'll add Aurelia to that list. Um, not not exactly what I want to be working on right now. I just feel like everybody else is already working on that. Um, but cool magic card. Well, that is it for our pack cracking de deck brew discussion. Uh, we'll go back to the normal format of janking brews, deck teching, and gameplay probably later today with uh, with the deck uh inspired by kellen it went nine and one in diamond while they were putting a roof over my head uh yesterday it was the first deck that i brewed with uh any cards from this format uh lightning helix being the inspiration and and then i streamed it after going nine and one in diamond and it went one and six but there was an issue with the stream uh so i couldn't post that so i'm gonna end up doing a a third <laughs> uh run through with this boros sword deck a uh, kellen sword deck um, and yeah, so that'll, that'll be our revisit to the normal format. I don't know if it's a one and six deck. I don't know if it's nine and one deck. It's probably neither, uh, but it is a bit of fun and it's not the easiest to play. So we'll get into that soon. If you like magic and janky brews and gameplay and such, like, and subscribe to do the things. See you next time.